reporting tools, this is something on our roadmap as well. Um, we're developing a tool that allows you to port an application from existing platforms onto Amigo platform. It's not there yet, but it's on our, on our roadmap. If you sign up to the, the website, you'll be updated with these information once they come out. We'll send you some inf inf emails around uh, that will show you what sort of tools are on coming out and when are they coming out. Yes? So you talk about um, uh, are there are there any, any plans to uh, make these tools available also for Windows uh, users, like uh, the prof profiling and these these tools are available for Windows users today, but you have to buy them. Yeah, we're not making them available free of course, uh, free of cost. So these tools, these uh, VTune and the C compiler, they've been available for a longer time. They're not new. We're making them uh, for the Migo community free of cost. Amigo developers. Uh, indefinitely, indefinitely, yeah. There's there's no royalties. There's no strings attached to it. You can use these tools to develop your Amigo application. Yeah. So this is a uh, one of the emphasis uh, that we're really committed to Amigo. This is not something that we're doing out of a fancy. Intel is very strongly committed to Amigo, uh, with a huge. Uh, division called OTC, the Open uh, Source Technology Center, the hundreds and hundreds of developers worldwide developing open source software. Part of them are working on Migo, and uh, these tool packages that we usually sell and make money out of it, we're giving to the Migo community free of cost, so they can develop their tools, uh, their applications. Yeah, that was the end of Uli's uh, presentation. Um, during the break, I was asked about the store and some marketing around the store. If there are no further questions on the tools, then I'll ex explain a bit how this runs. Tool question? Is the math library also free? Excuse me, D? Intel has a math library. The math library. Is it also free? That's not provided under the Amigo license, no. Unless it's part of the, uh, what's it called again? The integrated performance primitives. There is some math stuff in there in the data processing. Uh, image conversion, maybe some of it is already there that you need. But the pure math library is not I a part of this. Yeah, I wanted to say a bit about the store. Um, this is what the store looks like uh, on the Windows side. It's a bit small. Let's see if we can make it a bit bigger. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go. So this is what the store looks like on Windows. Uh, under Migo, it will look differently because tablets and handhelds need different user interfaces, but they'll have more or less the same functions. Um, the first area, the big area here, this is where we sh present five different applications rolling all the time. So these are top five applications we're promoting in the stores. Then we have a section called Staff Picks, apps we highly recommend. So these are applications the store manager has picked, has chosen, he wants to highlight here. There could be any application he thinks, or the into things we should uh, propose here to the end users. And there are also three are visible here, and with the More button, a uh, bigger page is shown with Staff Picks. What's hot? This section here, three are visible, again a more button, the top rated and the most downloaded. Um, users using application have the possibility to rate applications once they have downloaded them. They can give them up to five stars. And here we show the top rated. Most downloaded is clear, it's, uh, it's the, the down application with the highest download numbers are shown here. Um, here we have new releases. 
here we highlight uh, applications that have been released re uh, in, in recently and they pop up here. Check out our new arrivals. Again, a more button to give a longer page. Here's the category area. Categories are clear. This is different uh, categories. I think we have 16 or so different categories where you can uh, put your application into. So these are the different areas where we do marketing within the store and where your application can appear. Okay. The other question I had in the break was about uh, in-app advertising. Um, uh, today in Windows, it's Migos, it's a different story. Uh, in Windows, we already have an in-app advertising service with Mojiva. On Migo, we currently don't have one. S uh, we're allowing you to use any in-app advertising service you want to use at the moment. Once we have our own service, it could be Mojiva, it could be something else, uh, we will then uh, give you a, gra a grace period uh, by which you we want you to convert to the in-app advertising service we then offer. Uh, to give an example, under Windows, we didn't have one. We had the same situation. You were allowed to use your own. We introduced Mojivia, and then there's a grace period of, I think it was 12 or 15 months, we gave the developers to convert the application to uh, our uh, Mojiva in-app advertising. Under Windows, we don't have one at the moment. Excuse me, under Migo. Um, yes, question? Do you have any form of in-app payment? In-app payment is next on my list. Uh, in-app purchasing, in-app payment. Um, under Windows, we have a solution for free to paid up upgrades. That's the only in-app payment method we have at the moment. We have a pure in-app payment on our roadmap, both for Migo and for Windows, but it's currently not there. But we want to do that. At the moment, we are allowing you as an app developer to use whatever service you find, think is the best for your application. So you can build your own in-app payment system or use another. Uh, once we have our own, introduce our own, there will be a grace period again uh, by which we require you to change your application. But uh, clearly, in-app purchasing is a definite thing that we need for our store, and it's on our roadmap. It's going to come. There's a question. There's two questions at the back. Uh, wait for the microphone, please, so the everyone online can follow you. Um, okay, back to categories uh, at yes. the moment. Um, is an application forced to be uh, in just one only uh, category or can it occupy more than one category at the same time? We allow you to select two categories. Um. Uh, my next question is not focused on the application itself, it's mainly on the shop. Um, you mentioned before the... the uh, um, the mother who is buying the netbook and who uh, was told to never uh, use their credit card on the internet. The evil internet, yes. Yeah, and, and, after, and afterwards you just uh, told us that uh, she went to uh, Walmart and she buys her netbook and then she goes home and uses her credit card again. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, and you, I'm sure you heard about the Sony u uh, user data disaster ha happened yes. last week. Yes. Uh, how do you ensure that this will not happen? Because for me, it sounds like, you know, every shop is uh, in, the b in, in, in the back is um, wired together to uh, Intel. And maybe that there's some kind of uh, financial data uh, transfer and stuff, because uh, all the payment has happened somewhere. And for me, it looks like a, a, a big, a big thing. You know, when 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 this is captured once, this could be a, a major breakdown. Yes, I I fully agree with you. Um, doing any sort of financial transaction on the internet has an inherent risk, quite clearly. Any any data we uh, put onto any website and believe it's safe has an inherent risk of being unsafe. And Intel does whatever it can to prevent any data leakage. Um, but I can't, we have obviously uh, cannot guarantee 1000% that nothing will happen. Criminal people can do all sorts of things, but we'll do our utmost best to prevent that. 
Yeah. Um, now, coming to, to payment systems, credit cards versus other payment systems, we are uh, at the moment discussing other payment systems. Uh, at the moment, we do only have credit card. That's the only system we have for end customers. We are discussing other systems, uh, but there's nothing being decided yet up to date and nothing I can uh, freely speak about. Um, but uh, possible uh, systems are like uh, gift cards, prepaid credit cards, uh, bank drafts and things like that that we are discussing, but there's nothing been agreed yet. And has there been a security review by a foreign uh, third company or somewhere? Uh, don't know, can't answer the that. App but the, 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 the App App Store. Yeah, has it ha ha was there a security review from from a third party or some someone? Who I don't. I can't. I don't know. Can't answer that question. But I could find out how that is done in detail. If you uh, c collect a card at the back, where there's my email address on there. Send me your question. I'll answer that. Any other questions? I've got lots of sweets left here. Uh, we've got Twix, Mars, and Hanutas to offer. <coughs> no further questions. Well, here. oh, here we've got. What would you prefer, Mars, Twix, or Hanuta? Hanuta, off you go then. Uh, my question is. There's also a phone here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take it too. Uh, my question is, you mentioned earlier the market share is now very small of Migo. Correct. Is there any estimation of the rise of Migo and the expected market share in the future? There was uh, a publication recently about market share uh, projection by, I, I can't remember, one of these companies that do these uh, projections all the time, these market research companies. Uh, so it wasn't Intel. And Monica, do you remember the figure? I think it was 2013, 3% or something market share for handhelds. It was specifically about handhelds. Um, I don't have the data with me, but it was, it's publicly available on the internet. If you, if you search around the internet, you should find it. Uh, if you're not, then I can dig it out for you. Uh, and I believe it was 2013, 12, thi 12 or 13, 3% market share, roughly. You must, of, co of course, 3% doesn't sound a lot, but you must uh, see that it's a massively start, a uh, strong growing market. So if you look at the, the market growth of handheld system smartphones, it's going like that at the moment. Uh, so 3% in two years is quite a big number. Um, I can also s give you another vision. Uh, as I said, Intel is a semiconductor company. We want to sell chips. Um, we're entering the mobile market not for the fun of it, because not because it's hip, and we think it's sexy because we want to make money. Um, and I can tell you that any market that Intel has really entered and wanted to, to win, we've won. Uh, we won the only company, for example, server business. A couple of years ago, server business, Intel CPUs weren't really the big, okay. Intel wasn't uh, a big, massive player in the server market. If you look at server market today, it's quite a lot of Intel CPUs there sold today in that market. And uh, our goal, our vision is to do the same in the mobile market. That's why we're bringing newer and all new generations of at atom processor out every year. And uh, we're moving strongly into this market. We want to make a lot of money there. Migo is our preferred operating system. We're promoting it very heavily. So every time we go to a customer and say, here's our atom processor for your latest handheld, take Migo. This is our proposal and put app up on it. Excuse me? How do we conquer ARM? I don't know if we need to conquer them. Uh, I think the market is big enough for more than one uh, CPU manufacturer. Uh, but we need to gain market share. We're entering a new market for, for Intel. We're not in that market in a, a significant quantity. And uh, we are entering it. We're going to do business there and we're going to gain on big market share. That's our plan. 
I don't think we need to buy ARM or take them over. Personally, I believe our technology is strong and good and it will have the equal uh, customer perception and uh, user experience, if not better. May I ask another question? You have shown some uh, frameworks. Uh, at the beginning of the talk, you uh, said that uh, Qt is the preferred framework for Migo, and you ha also mentioned uh, Java, Adobe Air. Um, that was the, yes. Uh, how are your plans uh, on supporting Adobe Air and Java on Migo? Um, just looking for the slide. It doesn't really matter. Um, Java and Adobe Air under Migo. Well, I can tell you that um, Air is definitely something that we're working on against as we have a strong partnership with Adobe today on the Windows side and we want to extend that. Um, currently, for example, if you uh, are an Air developer and you submit your Air application to Adobe's site, then you can make a check mark there and automatically submit it to the App App Store as well. So with one submission to Adobe, you get to Adobe's store and to Intel store at the same time. And we would like to bring the same experience, obviously, to Migo. It's not there yet, but it's on our roadmap to do so. Java, I don't really know the status of Java under Migo. I'm assuming there's some licensing issues that need to be tackled, but I have no idea what the status is on that. You've talked about uh, a bridge between the web and uh, web yes. technology yes. and tablet technology. Yes. And uh, are there any plans for other uh, frameworks? Not at the moment, no. Okay. no. What we have is, as I said, this, this World Wide Web, also this, this web encapsulator. This is a, a, a service, only online service, where you uh, up more or less upload or, or give the URL to your web app and that's then converted into a nat native app. So it's not a, an IDE or any development environment, it's, it's an online service. Excuse me? It's an application that runs within a browser that's not native, it's a non-native application. A web, um, honestly I don't know if Ruby and everything would run, we need to try it out, it's in beta, it just came out last week, or no, two weeks ago. I haven't tried it myself. Give it a try. Tell me what you think about it. I do. Good. Okay. Um, well, we can go to the Adopt the Ducks session. Uh, we have ducks at the back. I don't want to take them back. Please take one home with you. And if you don't want ducks, we have, for the people who have these contracts in their hands, Tablets. Uh, Veronica, how are we going to handle the distribution of these things? Hold on, hold on. Take the mic first. Okay. Cosimo is just telling me that there's going to be another announcement in between. I'll give uh, Veronica and me and uh, Monica some time to get things organized. Okay? Thank you for your attention. Great. Um, in some minutes, you will get your devices, your Exo PCs. It's um, a tablet with um, Inter Atom chip inside, so you will be able to develop for that um, for the x86 platform and submit your app to the App App Store. We would like to 
to uh, that you would do that actually and uh, because of that we thought about um, meeting again on the 8th of May 2011 that's in two weeks or something like that yeah to to just meet up the developers are able to code together to share ideas and um, if we have some graphical talented people they can provide graphics for an application we will develop on that day and of course we also need testers so even if you don't know how to code or if you don't have the, tal the talent to um, to uh, 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 paint something uh, you can still come and test um, the app we will come up with and um, also I want to mention the Migo coding competition Uwe, are you there? Yes, yes, you should. It's Seabase uh, 1. Actually, not. <laughs> Great. Guy. Okay, um, the Migo coding competition 2011 is the successor of the Maemo coding competition we ran in 2010, yes, last summer. And um, the aim is to develop as much apps as possible for the Migo platform, either um, x86 or ARM platform. You can use um, any official Migo device or Migo build, like um, the one for the Nokia N900. And also, um, you can submit apps for Maemo, of course. Um, it's a completely community-driven effort, so there is no involvement of any company who says at us how we should do these things. And um, it's hosted by Maemo.org in the forums there is the discussion happening and yeah well okay we have uh, a quite extensive wiki site set it up for that where all the information is stored in a nice way in a very clear way there are also prizes of course um, currently we uh, have the um, the commitment from Nokia they will sponsor us um, the flights and hotel accommodation to the Migo conference in November oh I'm sorry and um, for the first ones of nine categories we have there's also a beginner category with this which is a little bit extra um, for the ones who code for a Maemo or Migo the first time. Then the second prizes are SSDs by Intel, about 120 gigabytes, something like that. And the third prizes are uh, vouchers. Uh, I don't know the English word. Uh, vouchers um, for a Pine Trail development platform. Currently, we are trying to get Migo hardware for to code at the moment, so not after the coding competition, but right now. But we don't have a yeah a final word on that. And there's also the possibility to uh, for the community to donate some money, some uh, a small amount, like you can see there. So the follow-up prizes can consist of some some money. Yeah. We have also a, a submitting site. Competition.meetmigo.org There you can submit your app. You just have to sign up. So we have your email address to contact you in case of questions. And uh, as you can see, we have already some submissions, both for Migo ARM, 
which includes MAEMO and also for uh, the MIGO X86 platform, which is the Interatom, of course. Now, as you will get your Exo PCs, your tablets in some minutes, it would be nice if you could take a look to code for that and take part in the competition. Thank you. I'm sorry? The, the beginner extra prize. Yes, I already announced that. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming and have a nice evening. <laughs>